Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is gonna be an interesting one. So what we're gonna to do today is destroy, completely annihilate a record in a very interesting way. So we're going to take a couple of ideas that people have and really put it to the test. Number one, Crosley Cruisers destroy records. We're going to either prove or disprove that, but actually what we really want to do is find out exactly how much pressure on the record, how much downforce, tracking force on the tone arm it's going to take to destroy a record. And wait till you see what record it is. It's funny. Um, so what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna start and take each track one by one. The first track is gonna have no, we're not gonna touch it. It's gonna be as is. The second track is going to be the Crosley Cruiser and we'll measure the tracking force, tracking at five or six grams, and that's it. But then we're gonna incrementally add weights for every progressive track and see how much damage, how much weight it takes to render damage onto a record. And then just for fun, I'm gonna take a vinyl record and play it with a steel needle phonograph. Something you're not supposed to do, but it ought to be pretty interesting. Can we even hear sound out of it? That'll be really interesting. Anyway, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. What better record player to destroy a record with than the infamous Crosley Cruiser? It's a third gen cruiser, but you know it's just gonna ruin your records. So we're going to use it to do just that. So we're gonna plug it in. We're gonna try it initially just with the weight as is, which we'll measure and show you all that good stuff. But we need a record to ruin. What record? Oh, this one ought to work. <laughs> so we're going to use this as our test subject. The record itself is clean. It is a pretty good copy as you can see there. It's in pretty good shape. It's not brand new. I mean, it has been played, but there's no damage to it. I just want to show the before. Then what we're going to do is add weight for every incremental track and then compare it at the end. We're going to put a label on here and show you zero, there'll be nothing we're not going to touch the first track this one's going to be six grams this one's going to be you know eight or whatever we do and we're going to put weights on the tone arm as we progress so let's go ahead and set up if there's one thing you're not supposed to do is play a vinyl record on a steel needle phonograph but we're going to do that too perhaps this is a phase i'm going through just destructive but it ought to make for good content i mean i would want to see what happens what happens if I was the kid and still am that wants to know what happens if I also am the kid that, you know, burned myself a lot, smashed my thumb, et cetera, et cetera. Cause I just want to know. I'm curious. I'm too curious. Comments are going to be really epic because you know, there'll be some people like, how could you ruin that record? It's a work of art. And there'll be other people who are like, you should smash that record player with a bat. So death to the record player long life to the record you just can't win you just can't win so we're not going to try to all right the first thing i want to do is demonstrate on camera yet again we've done it before but we're going to do it again the tracking force of the infamous crosley cruiser okay so and this is just a cheapo chuodenshi cartridge with a cheapo sapphire stylus this one even has a cheap plastic cantilever so this is going to peg probably because I think this is a five gram meter. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, five gram weight, zero it out and add five to whatever it says. So this thing is tracking at 5.96. We'll call it six grams. So by the way, it just happens to be a fact, albeit an inconvenient one to a lot of record people out there, that this cartridge is designed to track between five and six grams. The modulation, as you can see, does impact the coloration. You can see that this one looks a lighter color compared to that. That doesn't indicate wear or damage necessarily. That can be affected simply by the modulation, the volume, the sound in the song, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, this is the uh, side that I've chosen to use. It's different than I showed at the beginning, but what we're gonna do is label it so we can keep this clear. 
And like I said, at the end, we're going to play the other side on the steel uh, needle phonograph and see if we can get any sound on it as the record is literally shredded before our eyes. I've also documented the grooves before I've done anything with the high resolution photograph. And we'll do another one at the end. To keep things straight, I'm going to label this as my side A. It's like an anarchy symbol. <laughs> Didn't mean to, but might as well go for it. It's kind of an anarchist type of episode, I guess. So, like I said, the first track is our control. We're not going to touch it. Track A or 1 is going to be untouched. The second track is going to be with just the 6 grams of downforce that this record player will render on any average day, and then we'll add the weight progressively. So, without further ado, I'm going to cue this up. And we'll see what happens. Okay, and there it goes. Carving up track two. Yeah, this is the cheapest of the cheap cartridge. The plastic cantilever and what I'm sure is a sapphire tip. Yeah, this is about as rough and tumble as you can get on a modern record player. Okay, we are nearing the end of the track. I don't see anything visually at this point. So, but we're going to keep this as scientific as possible. We're going to compare things. We're going to look at things. I've got some coins that I'm going to measure out to see. I think if we do like two gram increments, it would be a good thing. So maybe find out how many coins equals two grams. So we can take this from six grams to eight grams and then do the same amount to make it 10 grams etc 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 so yeah we got a little bit left on this track but we are getting close so if this is six grams and this one would be eight ten twelve fourteen grams if we take it all that way that'd be cool let's see what happens so this is going to take a lot less than i thought i started with a with a quarter and that's almost five grams so that's like the entire you know weight of this cartridge almost if i put on a nickel it's four and a half. If I put on a penny, penny is just over two. So I'm going to go with one penny and we'll say it's essentially two grams plus, 2.12 grams. So yeah, let's uh, go ahead and add our first penny, which will be the first extra two grams. Okay, so we've added the penny to the top. So the cartridge by itself was tracking at six and now with two, it is, tra is tracking at eight, eight and change actually, no pun intended. So let's go ahead and start tracking with eight grams of downforce, grinding away the soft vinyl material. At what point will this actually damage our records? How much weight does it really take to destroy your records? You know, visually I still don't see any damage even at eight grams. I don't. And I know if I were to turn on this light, this LED light ring, then, you know, perhaps we could notice more, but I want to keep this uniform. I want to use a daylight because it photographs a lot better and it's a, a good representation of what we would see. Check it out. So far, so good. Okay. We are moving on to the next one. Okay. I got to keep this straight. So zero, this had six grams. This one we just played had Eight grams, we're gonna add another penny, hopefully without making this whole thing fall off. Oh, it made a little click audibly, that's interesting. So this will be 10 grams of downforce, right? Six, eight, 10. You can tell I was not a, a, a math student, not a good one anyway. And 10 grams coming your way. So we'll let it play through and at some point we gotta be doing some damage to this poor record, right? I think this is an interesting, interesting idea. People don't like to challenge their belief system. They don't like to be wrong. People by nature want to believe what they want to believe and they don't want you to change their mind. So sometimes facts don't matter to people, but at the same time, it's, it's a heck of a lot of fun disproving things <laughs> and just investigating and you know doing some discovery and finding out. Again, I'm very curious about how things work what makes things tick and, and what doesn't. 
So I'm curious how this is going to impact the record. We'll see. Okay, as you can see here, we've got the light on, 10 grams tracking right through the middle of this. I don't see anything, I see differences because of modulation, but I don't see anything, you know, from the point it's already played versus what it hasn't played yet, which is very interesting. Okay, 10 grams, and I still don't see anything obvious. I don't see anything obvious, which surprises me. I figured once we got to eight, honestly, that we would see something. So uh, 10 is gonna turn into 12 now as we add another two grams. And I'm gonna start playing the next track now with 12 grams of downforce. C certainly this must damage the record. We'll keep monitoring, we'll keep an eye on it, and we'll see. I, I honestly, this is a true test. I didn't prescribe the outcome. I had ideas, but even those are proven to be wrong because I thought honestly at it, it, it six, no, eight grams that we would start to see some shading, but so far not. Now, there are other factors. This is a conical stylus, so it's not riding all the way down in the groove. If you had an elliptical stylus, you would it would take a lot less weight to do that kind of damage. An elliptical stylus, you really needs to be tracking, depending on the cartridge, in the one and a half to two and a half zone for, for the most part. A conical or rounded tip stylus can track heavier. And like I said, these Chuo Denshi uh, phono cartridges, these ceramics are designed to track in the uh, five to six range, which this does just under six grams by itself. So yeah, this is uh, interesting. I'm learning, experiencing it here and we're gonna find the results. I'm trying to keep it as scientific as possible. I'm trying to shoot this as quick as possible too, since so the light doesn't change on us, because I know that'll impact things. Got the before and after pictures, so we'll see how it goes. Um, visually, we're about halfway through the track now, and just with the daylight, again, I do not see anything. Let's look at um, this amount of weight with the light on. So as you can see, there's nothing visual. Now, if you looked at this all under a microscope, you could make the case that you know there was changes in wear being made even at you know lighter tracking forces, but visually, no, I'm not seeing any issue even at this weight, which is very surprising. It should also be stated too, I've been listening between takes and the sound doesn't sound any different than when we started. It's not becoming distorted. It's not sounding, you know, you know, like it's got semblance issues or something. It's, it sounds as good as it started sounding, which is interesting. So the record, you know, there's there's things out there saying these records can handle up to nine grams. Now we've sur surpassed that because we're at, four, what are we at, 14 now? We're at six, eight, 10, 12. We're at 12 grams right now and about to be 14 and so far no problem. Speaking of which, um, that's the end of that track and we're gonna add our final weight, bringing our grand total to 14 grams. <laughs> 14 grams as we finish out this record and so far, you tell me, I'm trying to, this is a visual thing. You guys can make your own assessment. The comments, I don't need to tell you, will be interesting to read. Half the fun of videos is comments. Sometimes if I'm watching TikTok especially, <laughs> you look at the comments, sometimes it's more funny than the actual video or interesting than the video itself. So I'm always curious what you guys are thinking what you're saying and what your two cents are and teaching me. I learn stuff every day. Today, there was somebody that was educating me on my Technics deck, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but it's, it doesn't have quartz lock. It's got a um, servo motor, so it's speed checked at the motor. And even still, the strobe doesn't stay perfectly still. It kind of drifts like this, just a tiny, tiny bit. And he was saying that that's a desirable trait, that it actually helps keep it, keep the sound from being, you know, kind of dull and lifeless. So you learn something every day. Now, keeping in mind too, this is all extremely subjective. And, you know, sometimes people are gonna be wrong. I, you know, made a whole YouTube channel about learning. <laughs> you, were, you thought I was gonna say a whole YouTube channel about being wrong. Well, I've definitely been wrong at times, but I've been right, I would think, quite a few more times than I've been wrong. Hopefully this uh, video entertains and educates people as well. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom in with the light on again and see what things are looking like. 14 grams. That's a lot of downforce. I wonder if it's causing the needle itself to kind of flex with the cantilever. 
Well, it's definitely uh, scraping some gunk out of the grooves there. It's hard to say how bent that really is, but it's it's staying in there. It's, it's handling it like a champ, actually. Okay, we just finished our pass with the full weight, 14 grams. I mean, that <laughs> that is way more. I mean, that's more than double where we started. That's a lot of weight, but did it damage the record? Now, something came to mind, too, as I was waiting for this to finish. And I actually did listen. There was a little bit of semblance issues. Uh, just kind of like the S's kind of get mushed. Like, kind of the S's sounded not quite as crisp on that last one there, uh, which could be, you know, due to the intense weight that we were putting on this. But, you know, the sound was listenable throughout. I thought that by the time we got about halfway, this thing would just start shading so white, white, white because it was just being scratched up. This is a vinyl record, by the way. If you did this to styrene, it would probably be a different story that's another show for another day but i want to do uh, an after picture now and i'm going to label the record so we can take a closer look okay so we have this labeled here uh, with our control surface which is the one that we didn't play at all it's not pristine virgin vinyl because this is a used record but it's a very good condition one this is the crosley cruiser at six grams as is with no extra weight then we added up to eight grams this had 10 12 14. so let's let me set up a shot where we can see in closer detail with better lighting if we can notice any damage okay and welcome to my front yard i don't think we've ever filmed out here before i thought it would be good to bring this out in the daylight so we can see those grooves in detail and hopefully ascertain whether or not there is any damage here to the naked eye this looks fine i don't see anything even at 14 grams i don't see anything that looks like damage or even heavy wear which is surprising you know i'm trying to be as objective as possible here you guys but i don't see damage i just don't see it do you guys see it now if you played it you know multiple times that's a different story you know how many times can a record withstand 14 grams versus six but in terms of, you know, shredding your records, I mean, it's even polish. I see even some polish up here. It's definitely not a one and done situation. It's funny, if you try to play an orthophonic recording on an acoustic phonograph like this, boy, did the old man cane start flying around in the air. So I can only imagine what it's gonna be like playing a vinyl record. You're not supposed to do this. This is, this is, there's no, I know the outcome of this. It's not going to be good. But I'm curious, could you hear something? So we're going to use the opposite side. This is the one we haven't yet used in this oh-so-scientific test. It's something I've always wanted to do. Let's check the tracking force of this thing. I'm curious. Okay, so there's 28.53 or something grams in an ounce. So I put this on ounces because this is heavy. I can tell you right away, this is not going to be <laughs> five grams or less. This is a heavy heavy reproducer so i don't even know if the scale can you know measure this but let's see what happens all right so it pegs out let me see if i put on the weight and zero it out i feel like that's not even gonna matter that's <laughs> it's just so heavy it's just so heavy yeah it pegs it out so yeah i gotta figure out another way to measure this well that's because this thing tracks between 100 and 200 grams <laughs> that's right 100 to 200 grams. Uh, damage, uh, damage, destruction, terror. So a vinyl record is absolutely doomed. All right. Hope you guys are excited because I actually kind of am. I got this wound up. Obviously, this will be spinning at 78 RPM, which is going to render this kind of cartoony sounding. And what's funny about this, too, is that this is a microgroove record. This is a three mil stylus. This is the type of stylus designed to track a wide groove record, you know, like a shellac record. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna drop it right in the middle of the third track. As we watch the wear ring form, I'm actually surprised it's as audible as it is. Wow, this is really interesting. Yeah, it does not sound good. And that right there, that's what 170-ish grams 
<laughs> it will do to your vinyl record. Played with the incorrect stylus. Just absolutely decimated it. Absolutely decimated it. So to the people that think that you're going to damage a shellac record by playing it with a microgroove stylus at five grams or less. I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> I honestly thought we would see a wear ring that clear as we got up to eight grams with the other stylus. By the way, let's flip this over. One more look here. Oh, the lighting's good over here on the right. And it's just, you know, this is featherweight stuff, you guys. This is completely featherweight compared to this. So the lesson here is I wouldn't worry about things tracking five to six grams. You may not want to put on your prized records just for the standpoint of they will wear them faster. I mean, it's mathematics that it's going to wear faster than something tracking at half that weight. But is it just going to arbitrarily damage your records? I don't think so. Sometimes recordology goes off the rails a little bit. And perhaps this show was one of those times, but it's interesting, right? I would watch this. If I saw this thumbnail, I'd be like, heck yeah, I want to see this. It's sort of a tabloid kind of uh, watching the train wreck kind of a thing. But it's fun. It's interesting. And now that we've done it, you don't have to do it. And we all know exactly how much weight it takes to really damage a record we all are a little more educated now at this point. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. But my friends, that is going to do it for today. Oh yeah, join the Vinyl Nation, why don't you? We have some really cool content over there. Extra show a week, other exclusive benefits. Would love to have you there. There's a link down below. There's also merchandise links if you're interested in that. But most of all, just thank you for being here. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Happy record hunting, and we'll see you next time.